There you go. All right. And so, as I was saying, uh, one of the things that I love about the Apostle Peter uh, is just that he's just another average Joe uh, who was hardworking man who loved the Lord and just like us uh, made many mistakes along the way. And that's probably why uh, we can resonate with him so well. And so whenever we come to a teaching of, uh, of his, whether it's uh, out of this first letter or the second letter, uh, we know that the wisdom, knowledge, and, and encouragement uh, that we receive isn't coming from somebody uh, who's just been asked to write a book about a topic, uh, but that it's actually coming from someone who's been there and done that. Uh, now, over the last couple of meetings, we've been uh, going through Second uh, Peter uh, chapter 1, uh, we are being reminded about the knowing and growing of our faith in Jesus Christ. And, and a couple of weeks ago, if you remember, uh, we, were, we were reminded that, he, that this Christian life begins with faith. And this faith is Jesus Christ. And also that his, this faith involves God's power and God's promises. And then last week, we were reminded that this faith results in spiritual growth. And from that, it produces characteristics for a godly life. And then today, uh, we'll be reminded that our spiritual growth brings practical results. And so I've titled our devotion just that, Spiritual Growth That Brings Practical Results. And so if you have your Bibles open in 2 Peter chapter 1, I'll be reading at verse 8, starting at verse 8. <clears throat> and so Peter writes, For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor, or, nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Verse 10. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What a great passage, and, and just what a great way to end this uh, as we go through this section. Now, in my study Bible that I use to prepare for my weekly devotions, and maybe you have them as well, are the special features, you know, the uh, commentaries at the bottom of the page, the, the center column Bible references, and, and then just at the top of each new paragraph are titles of a new section. And so the title for this particular section uh, that we are going through is entitled Fruitful Growth in the Faith. And what it reflects are the topics that we've been rediscovering in our last few meetings. And what's been great for me personally uh, about these studies is that they are reminding me that I serve an incredible, awesome, loving, and faithful God. And so I know that whenever I'm being tested or struggling or just going through a tough season, uh, I know that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and, and that he will never leave me nor forsake me. And really, all I have to do is put my faith in him. It's that simple. Now, let's say that a uh, non-believer or a, even a new believer uh, listening to me uh, say this is, or is hearing one of you seasoned believers share your testimony. And they're really listening uh, because they are interested. But they're still scratching their heads and say, uh, well, that sounds fine and all, uh, but how can a believer be certain that he is growing spiritually? Where's the proof? Well, that's a very good question. Uh, and if that person is listening now, I would just encourage them to turn to these passages where Peter gives three evidences of true spiritual growth. And so as we look at verse 8, we see that Peter's first evidence of true spiritual growth is fruitfulness. And let me just read uh, verse 8 again. Uh, for, and for if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so what Peter is saying here is that these things uh, that he's referring to are the actual fruits, that they are the key pieces of evidence of our true spiritual growth. And though some non-believers or even new believers might shrug their shoulders and say, so? Uh, they have no idea that this is not the kind of fruit that you get at the local fruit stand. Uh, but in fact, it's fruit that grows from a faithful, diligent, obedient, and disciplined believer who, who's been and continues to be uh, trimmed and pruned on a daily basis by the hands of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, and by the love of Jesus. And what's even better still is, is the fact that we will be continually filled and growing in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
And the more we become like Jesus, the more the spirit can use us in witness and in service. But a word for of warning to the believer who is not growing. Uh, he is considered idle or is in this verse uh, barren and he's, unfru- and he's unfruitful. And unfortunately, his knowledge of Jesus Christ is producing nothing practical and is basically ineffective in his life. And so the people who fail to grow usually grow to fail in everything else. Now, if that person asks, uh, well, what if I don't have what it takes to stay faithful and grow or if I don't have uh, any gifts or talents? Well, first of all, everybody has at least one gift of, that the Lord has given. Uh, but the problem is, is that either uh, Either A, you haven't asked the Lord, or you just haven't put it into practice, uh, whether it be because of laziness or you just simply don't want to. And then second, you won't know if you don't ask, uh, because if you're serious about wanting is to stay faithful and you really want to serve the Lord, you need to ask the Lord and believe he will provide. Which reminds me uh, of a comment I heard uh, made by a pastor yesterday on the radio, and, and I found it profound, uh, but he said, Faith is not a contribution to Jesus' death on the cross, but a response to his death on the cross. And I love that uh, because what he is reminding me is that I have nothing and I can do nothing, but simply and humbly put my faith in him. And I love uh, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. That, that puts it beautifully. Uh, For by grace you have been saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. I love it. And so... Let me also encourage you by saying uh, some of the most effective Christians I have known uh, are people without dramatic talents and special abilities or even exciting personalities. Yet God used them in marvelous ways. Why? Because they are becoming more like Jesus Christ. They have the kind of character and conduct that God can trust with blessings. They are fruitful because they are faithful and they are effective because they are growing in their Christian lives. Peter's next uh, a uh, piece of evidence is shown here in verse 9 is vision. Again, let me just read verse 9. Uh, For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. You know, as you get older, they say one of the first things to go uh, is your sight. Well, nutritionists tell us that uh, a diet can certainly affect vision. And I would have to agree. And this is especially true in the spiritual realm. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Because just as it is important uh, to ingest healthy foods to maintain a healthy body, uh, the same goes for the believer who desires to grow and maintain a healthy walk with the Lord. And the things the believer must ingest uh, must be Christ-centered and in faith. But unfortunately, we see people and we even know people who are unsaved and are walking in darkness because Satan has blinded their mind. And so for the person who is uh, watching this and, and is not saved, or for the believer who may be unsure of his salvation, just know that a person must be born again before his eyes are opened and is able to see the kingdom of God. But don't just stop there, uh, because after our eyes are opened, uh, it's important that we increase our vision and see all that God wants us to see. Now, here in verse 9, we see that Peter uses the word short-sighted. Uh, and in translation, uh, basically means a person who cannot see afar off. And so the picture Peter is drawing here is that of a person who is closing his eyes or squinting because uh, they are unable to see at a distance. Uh, for me, I wear glasses. And so uh, it kind of gives you that it, the idea. And unfortunately, this is true, and not just for the individual, but for the Christians to see only their own church or maybe their own denomination and fail to see the greatness of God's family around the world. They see the needs at home, but have no vision for a lost world. And so unfortunately, uh, many congregations today are a lot like the church at Laodicea. Uh, They are proud that they are rich and increased with goods uh, and have need of nothing. And yet do not realize they are wretched, miserable, and poor, and even blind. You know, it's a tragedy uh, to be uh, spiritually nearsighted. Uh, but it's even a greater tragedy to be blinded. And if we forget that what God has done for us, we will not be excited to share uh, Christ with others. Rather, let's cultivate gratitude in our hearts and sharpen our spiritual vision. Life's just too short and uh, the needs of this world are just too great for God's people to be walking around with their eyes closed. Third, 
And our final piece of evidence of true spiritual growth is here in verse 10, 11, is security. Security. So the other day, I, I was reading a statement that said, if you see somebody stumbling around at night with their eyes open and out of focus, they may be sleepwalking. If you see someone stumbling around at night with their eyes closed, then they are definitely sleepwalking or just asking for trouble. Now, that's good to know, but I also liken that wisdom for the Christian. If we walk around this Christian life with our eyes closed, we will stumble. But for the growing Christian, he walks with confidence because he knows he's secure in Christ. And that's a great place to be because it's not our profession in faith that guarantees we are saved. Uh, it is our progression in the faith that gives us that assurance. And the person who claims to be the child of God, but whose character and conduct gives no evidence of spiritual growth, is only deceiving himself and heading for judgment. Now, in verse 10, we read that uh, where Peter pointed out that calling and election go together. Uh, because the same God who elects his people also ordains the means to call them. In fact, in 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 13 and 14, the Apostle Paul um, also iterates the same message, that both the calling and election must go together. In short, he says, uh, we do not preach election to, to unsaved people. We preach the gospel. And so God uses that gospel to call sinners to, to repentance, and then those sinners discovered they, that they were actually chosen by God. Also in verse 10, uh, we see that, P that Peter also pointed out that election is no excuse for spiritual immaturity or for lack of effort in the Christian life. Uh, now, unfortunately, there will be some believers who will go so far as to say, well, uh, well what is going to be is going to be. You know, sirrah, sirrah. Uh, and there's nothing we can do about it. Well, no, there is something you can do. And so Peter admonishes here, as he did back in verse 5, to be diligent, which means we need to make every effort. Now, while it is true that God must work in us uh, before we can do his will, Philippians 2, verses 12 and 13, it is also true that we must be willing uh, for God to work, and we must cooperate with him, which means divine election must never be an excuse for human laziness. Now, for the Christian uh, who is sure of his election and calling, uh, that person will never stumble, but in fact will prove uh, by a consistent, life, a, a consistent life that he is truly a child of God. Now, he will not always be on the mountaintop, uh, but he will always be climbing higher. And if we do these things, as, as prescribed to us in verse 8, uh, and if we display uh, Christian character and growth in our daily lives, then we can be sure that we are transformed or converted and one day we'll be in heaven. In fact, the growing Christian can look forward uh, to in an abundant entrance into the eternal kingdom, and every believer will arrive in heaven. And so the application for us today, just think of the blessings that the growing Christian enjoys, the fruitfulness, vision, and security, and heaven's best. The Christian life begins with faith, but that faith must lead to spiritual growth unless it is dead faith. And dead faith is not saving faith, but faith leads to spiritual growth and spiritual growth brings practical results in life and in service. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for today and uh, Lord, for this time with my brothers and sisters that are here and those who will be uh, watching this later, uh, if, if, if that is to be. Uh, Lord, we just praise you and thank you that we can come together and open your word and uh, just grow in our relationship with you. And Lord, by knowing uh, where we are in our faith with you, where we are in our walk, Lord, we just thank you for bringing that to our attention. And we thank you for, for Peter and this, and this letter and, and all the studies we've gotten out of this, out of the, uh, chapter one. Uh, so Father God, just uh, have your way in our hearts this day and the rest of this week. We thank you, Lord. We love you. We praise you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.